Time now for Iron Africa. Coming up, Mali's presidency says ex-opposition leader Soumaila Cisse and French charity worker Sophie Petronat are free. The pair who were kidnapped by Islamist insurgents on the way to Bamako will be getting the latest from the Malian capital. And the tooth at the centre of decades of controversy. We report on Belgium's decision to hand over the only remnant of assassinated DRC independence icon Patrice Lumumba. We start with the latest from Mali, where the president's office says former opposition leader and presidential candidate Soumaïla Sissé has been freed, along with French charity worker Sophie Petronin. She was kidnapped by Islamic militants in the northern city of Gao back in 2016. The pair reportedly uh, on their way to the capital Bamako. For more, I'm joined now by our correspondent Mohamed Salaha. Thanks for talking to us, uh, Mohamed. What's the latest? We know, we know more. Sumaila Sisi, Sophie Petronin, and two of our Italian hostages have been released. In total, there are four uh, former hostages who are conveyed to Bamako. They, their plane took off from Tessalit uh, in a military in a military plan. This information was confirmed by a statement uh, um, signed by the crisis unit uh, the Malian government set up after the kidnapping of uh, Sumaila Sisse. So here in Mali, people are, are uh, gathered and conveyed to the airport to welcome the hostages. There had been speculation over this release for some time. Tell us a little bit more about the circumstances uh, of the release. Uh, Mali released more than 100 suspected jihadists uh, quite recently, for example. Uh, another information also, according to the statements, uh, the hostages have been released since, since 6 of October. And uh, the situation which conduct to the release of Sumaila Sisse, Sophie Petronen, and the two of our uh, Italian uh, is a prisoner exchange. During the last weekend, more than 100 uh, prisoners, terrorists, jihadists, and jihadist allies have been released from uh, Mali and uh, probably in the uh, West Africa, re in West Africa, uh, some countries. So prisoners have been conveyed in the north of Mali and in the center in order to be freed. So once those those prisoners who have been freed, Sumaila Sisi and other hostage procedures started. So currently they are freed and on abroad to Bamako. People can't wait to see them. Mohamed Salaha, thanks for talking to us. More now on the story of uh, Sumaila Sisi. Here's France 24's Ellen Gainsford. He was kidnapped in near Funke, a stronghold for his Union for the Republic and Democracy Party in the Timbuktu region of Mali. On the 25th of March, two unidentified men opened fire on Sumaila Sisse's convoy as he ventured into an area where armed groups are known to roam. Seventy-year-old Sumaila Sisse was on the campaign trail when he was captured. A key figure in the Malian opposition, in 2018, he came second in presidential elections, losing out to Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. Protests against Keita led to the army taking power in a coup last August. Those demonstrating also called for Sisse's release. Sisse's kidnapping was never claimed by a specific armed group. But suspicions lie with the jihadist organization Damadou Koufa, linked to al-Qaeda in the Maghreb. Many hostages have been taken in Mali since the start of unrest in 2012, but he's the first high-profile politician to have been targeted. Well, speculation has been building for some time over a release for 75-year-old French aid worker Sophie Petrona. France 24, Shirley Sitbon has more now on her story. Sophie Petrona settled in Mali about 20 years ago to help children. The doctor founded an association to treat those suffering from malnutrition, working in Gao. On October 24, 2016, she was abducted by gunmen. A group ideologically close to Al-Qaeda claimed responsibility for that attack six months later. 
President Emmanuel Macron said France was working hard to free her. Et je pense aujourd'hui à notre compatriote Sophie Petronin, enlevée à Gao, la veille de Noël. While hinting that the country will not give in to the terrorist demands of ransom. Ils n'attendent qu'un jeu explicite avec les pouvoirs publics de tous les pays pour pouvoir donner un prix à une vie et pour pouvoir généraliser ce commerce qui aujourd'hui les fait vivre. At the time, Petronin's family had accused the government of not doing enough for her release. In 2018, the hostage takers issued videos showing the doctor who seemed weak. Petronin has been ill. Her family, though, said it had proof she was getting her medication during her captivity. In April 2020, authorities shared some positive developments for the family, proof showing the doctor was still alive after two years of uncertainty. Let's get some more African news in brief now. And also in Mali, 11 political and military figures arrested during August coup have been released. They include former Prime Minister Bubu Sisse, the move announced by Colonel Asimi Goita, who was named vice president of the transitional government last month. Regional bloc ECOWAS has now lifted sanctions against Mali after demanding the release of those detained during the coup and a return to civilian rule. Numerous members of the junta, however, continue to occupy key posts. Elsewhere, residents in the Tunisian capital Tunis living under renewed restrictions this Thursday after authorities imposed a curfew aimed at stemming a surge in coronavirus cases. The order will run from 9pm to 5am, starting two hours earlier at weekends. The country shutting down its economy and closed borders initially in March. That move on which the government says it can't afford to repeat. This recent uptick in COVID cases, more than 20,000 reported over the past month, is threatening the country's intensive care system. In Algeria, the rape and murder of a 19-year-old woman has sparked calls for action over what campaigners say is a culture of silence over gender-based violence. The body of the young woman, identified as Shaima, was uh, found earlier this month at a deserted petrol station in Tenia, 80 kilometres east of the capital, Algiers. Local media said she was beaten, raped and burned alive. A suspect, who Jana's mother has said was an acquaintance of the family, has reportedly confessed to the attack and been charged. Shaima's death seeing protests on the streets of Algiers and Oran today. Now, almost 60 years after his assassination, independence hero Patrice Lumumba could finally have a grave in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This after Belgium agreed to hand over the only remnant of his body, a tooth. It's been at the centre of controversy for the past two decades and the cause of painful colonial history. This report from our team in Brussels. When he began his campaign for the memory of Patrice Lumumba, this activist had no idea that his fight would one day revolve around a single tooth, a vestige that Belgian justice will soon give to the descendants of the first Congolese prime minister. Patrice Lumumba was allegedly assassinated by Belgian police with the support of the CIA and Congolese authorities just a few months after independence. C'est déjà pas important qu'on a décidé de restituer les dents à la famille au peuple congolais. Maintenant, la question, comment on va restituer Parce que c'est quand même un des assassins du siècle. Et en plus, il y a encore un procès qui est en cours. The story of this tooth is as dark as it is long. For years, the policeman responsible for making the body disappear kept the remains at home. He went so far as to exhibit it several times on television. Images from which this Congolese writer still can't recover. J'ai quand même vu ce mec venir déclarer devant tout le monde à la télé qu'il avait découpé le monde en petits morceaux, qu'il avait mis dans l'acide. Il a raconté ça comme on raconte euh, n'importe quelle petite histoire. Et c'est passé comme ça. Moi, j'ai vu ça complètement épouvanté un soir. On appelle ça recel de cadavre dans un pays civilisé où il y a des lois. It wasn't until 2016 that the tooth was seized by the courts in the context of a lawsuit brought in Belgium by the descendants of Patrice Lumumba. On a réussi à faire qualifier ce dossier d'assassinat de Monsieur Lumumba en crime de guerre. Et donc, il est imprescriptible, ce qui permet, 60 ans après ou presque, de poursuivre l'enquête. But the investigation has been open for more than nine years. That's what irritates this sociologist, whose book, published in 1999, led to the establishment of an inquiry commission in the parliament. Sur l'enquête, je suis très pessimiste, parce que le procureur général, il a dit que jusqu'à maintenant, il n'a toujours pas 
euh, écrit une lettre euh, au Parlement belge pour euh, demander les comptes rendus. Des auditions qu'ils ont faites euh, à huis clos avec des gens impliqués dans l'assassinat, ça prouve quand même qu'il n'y a pas vraiment une volonté d'aller au bout. It's a dark story that reminds people of Belgium's painful relationship with its former colony. That's it for this edition of Iron Africa. Thanks for watching. Do stay with us here on France 24.